Thanks to all the viewers who support the channel on Patreon and our partners who help make these videos possible. Links below if you'd like to join the crew. We're looking at the A10 UC9020 multi-channel AV streaming mixer today. And if you're not sure what that is or who might want one, hopefully this video will help. With gatherings and meetings off limits around the world for the foreseeable future, streaming content online is the obvious direction to go for many different people and industries. From musicians live streaming home concerts to professors moving their entire curriculum online, many are looking for ways to streamline their content delivery without spending a pile of cash in the process. There are tons of options and possibilities with live streaming, and they can range from using just a smartphone or laptop webcam, all the way up to a full broadcast style studio to create your content. For many people though, a couple of camera angles and an additional input for playing presentations and other media would be a very capable setup and a real step up from what they have now. Being able to stream to multiple services without tying up a computer might be a valuable thing, and having a local recording done with an external drive you already own sounds pretty good. Speaking Speaking of things you might already own, this does require an iPad for the accompanying app to run, but provides familiar iOS interaction with graphics, text, loading content for presentations. If you're like me and you have a video camera and an iPad on hand already, this unit certainly ticks a lot of boxes early on. For between $1,000 and $1,200 US at the time of filming, it comes in as a pretty affordable option too if you're looking to stretch your streaming budget as far as possible. The UC9020 is capable of encoding two output streams at a max resolution of 1920 by 1080p, 30 frames a second, encoded to H.264 at 10 megabits per second. Using the built-in RJ45 connection and a good internet connection, you can use this unit to stream to Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, Periscope, Twitter, Twitch, or any custom RTMP destination. You can stream to any two destinations at the same time or stream to one service and use the second encoder to record locally to an external drive for later use or backup. So let's get into some more of the specs. There are three HDMI source inputs. HDMI input one is an HDMI 2.0 input capable of 4K and has an equally capable loop through output. HDMI input 2 is split into A and B inputs, both HDMI 1 capable of up to 1920 by 1080p, 60 frames a second, with none of the inputs having HDCP support. Audio is captured from the HDMI inputs for mixing internally, along with a quarter inch mic input as well as a pair of RCA inputs for minus 10 dB line level signals. Outputs include a source program output that's capable of outputting clean 1080p at 60 frames a second with audio over HDMI. This output can toggle between sources and the program using the dedicated hardware button or via the app. All of the hardware controls on this unit are available via the app for remote control. The HDMI 1 loop through output is useful for recording the primary camera to another recorder or sending it to any number of other destinations. Recording is done via the USB 3 type A port on the back of the unit and will record an MP4 H.264 file at a max resolution again of 1080p 30 frames a second. I used a simple USB 3 32 gigabyte drive and had great results with a 2 hour and 25 minute live stream taking up just under 7 gigabytes of space. This port is also where you will load firmware for any updates you might need to perform in the future. I updated this one again using the same drive when the unit arrived and it was a very simple process. Audio output is limited on this unit to stereo over the HDMI outputs or a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack most suited to be used with headphones for monitoring. I can see a typical setup for this being a primary camera connected to HDMI 1 with HDMI 2 working well for a secondary angle like an overhead camera for a tech channel on input A and a laptop or another device connected to input B for additional content playback. And that'd be pretty simple to set up for home streaming or a small business setup. If you're confused why there are eight buttons in the switcher section though and only three inputs, we need to look at what you're actually switching. This is a scene switcher, which is really quite cool. Instead of simple input switching inside the control software, you use these different layers to choose different inputs, graphics, and other elements and stack them up similar to how you would in Photoshop. You can add additional graphics from your photos library as well and custom text layers right in the app. 
At the time of this video, things like font options and the ability to precisely place objects on a small screen like my iPad mini is somewhat limited. But even if they never add to what's here in a new firmware update, it's a reasonable compromise to needing a computer to handle graphics and text overlays for a simple stream. I would recommend getting the biggest and most capable iPad you can if you're serious about using this unit. The app is well made and easy to use even on an iPad mini, but the age of my iPad mini along with its small size really leave me wanting to experience this switcher with a larger iPad Pro. The stream quality and ease of setup was really quite good. If you've worked with streaming software like OBS before, it's as simple as copying the RTMP address from your streaming service as well as the key into the appropriate places and you're ready. I did this by setting up the stream first on my computer, copying those credentials to a note and sharing that to the iPad using AirDrop which then made it really easy to copy and paste everything correctly. There are instructions in the manual though to do this all on the iPad, so no external computer is required. It was just a little easier for me than trying to do it all on such a small device. The build quality on this unit is very good, as has been everything I've tested personally from A10. The metal housing does a good job of dissipating heat over multiple hours of use and makes this unit feel much more substantial than its smaller size might allow if it was a lightweight plastic unit. The angle of the iPad holder is a bit steep for my personal taste, but bigger iPads may work better. I do feel like the size could be improved for a unit aimed at portable work. The bottom piece stands off the unit a long way and combines with the tall transition fader to make this unit more bulky than it possibly could be. I would gladly trade off the T-bar for a simple fader cap to save the height, and if the bottom stand could be shorter or removable, this unit would fit into almost any backpack or mobile bag. As it is though, it packs a ton of functionality into a very, very small footprint. It weighs in just over four pounds. The power supply is internal, which I love, and the user interface is one that I think anyone could figure out without having to consult the manual if you've done any sort of streaming before in the past. Now a unit like this is never going to be the most versatile or capable individual switcher or graphics generator or encoder or video recorder that you could buy. But as an all-in-one that doesn't blow the budget, it's absolutely worth a look. Especially if you fall into that group who might have an iPad and camera already and just want to get a good looking stream going quickly. Thanks again to A10 for sending this one over for us to look at. It's always fun seeing the unique products that they come up with. Uh, they've got some really cool stuff and an interesting perspective on how to combine features in a unique way. You can join us on the DC SoundUp Discord server if you've got questions about streaming or the UC9020 specifically. That server is linked on the homepage at dcsoundup.com. Thank you so much to all the viewers who support the channel on Patreon and our partners who help make these videos possible. There's links below to everything, including how to support the channel if you'd like to join the crew. I'll see you next time.